Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today we will check another student's game and we will just start from a critical position, uh, no focus on the opening, just um, start from here. As usual, if you want to challenge yourself, try to come up with a move in this position, black to move. And we will continue with your suggestions. But first, we want to understand what's really going on here, um, how good the position is. So basically, let's have a look at black's advantages. Of course, black is having the pair of bishops and with no pawn chains in the center, this is a clear advantage. In addition to that, we also have the d-file and we are quicker there to enter. So that's also another advantage. And a third advantage here is the pawn structure. Usually the bishops prefer pawns on both wings and a slight asymmetry of pawns because it's just more likely to create pass pawns in such a structure. And here we have this asymmetry because white is having two versus one here and yeah, as a result, we have a four versus three minor, a majority on the king side. So a lot of advantages and black is basically winning here, but it's not that easy as the game showed. And um, yeah, to give some little hint how to play, we want to have a look at this bishop. So what do you think? Is this bishop standing well there or is it standing yeah, badly? And honestly, I think this bishop is actually not well placed there because it's it's doing nothing. The e-file is not really relevant because, I mean, this pawn is not in danger. And if so, I can protect it this way. And apart from that, the bishop is not doing anything. Another downside is if I ever take the b2 pawn, this bishop might be hanging. Taking all those points together, I think... This bishop is misplaced here and might be a target later. So we are not in a hurry to, yeah, to force the bishop away because it might just improve the position. Therefore, I think the move everyone should consider first is entering with the rook. And yeah, it's the best move here. We put some pressure on f2, we put some pressure here and we may be ready to play e3. If white goes very passive, for example, we can go here. But it's not so easy to suggest a defense, maybe yeah, some natural try, something like this. But here we pick up this pawn and we again see how useful it is to have the bishop still on b5 because knight a4 is not even an option. Otherwise, we should at least consider it because yeah, he's getting rid of our bishop pair. But here it's just not possible due to this bishop. So actually it's quite hard to suggest anything good here. Um, white needs to give up a pawn and yeah, remains in a lost position. Okay, another good move, if you had been thinking about this, is this e3 move. Because we open the position even more and we also expose the white king a bit more. Kind of problem is that rook d1 is kind of a creative and... Yeah, tenacious defense as after takes king f1. This pawn might be lost in the future and we did not manage to, to enter with our rook on the second rank. This is still very good for black, but not best. Meanwhile, if they would have to take, such thing would be quite excellent. We win a pawn and we open the position. Still pawns on both wings, so converting chances are quite good. However, let's have a look how the game went. The game went a6, which is, I think, a clear mistake because this bishop goes all the way back and white is gaining some stability in his position. First, after a move like e3, he might even consider f3 because we no longer have this discovered check hitting the rook. And also after this rook d2, which was played in the game now, but was not that strong any longer, ran into this. And previously we could just have taken here, 
but here I thought black was probably afraid of this and not sure if this is winning or not. Probably it's not winning yet, but it's still a huge advantage. And yeah, it, it's a decent option. And black could actually have gone for this to um, yeah retain his advantage. But also his move was quite good. I think the mistake was really in the move before playing a6. So the game continued. Rook d8 takes takes. Rook d1. This time we really need to take. We don't want um, yeah his rook to enter here. Uh, probably rook b2 is also just very bad. There is some fork uh, followed by taking on c5 and rook d8. So no choice. We need to take d1, knight to d1. So how did the position change? Are we still better here? Yes, because we still have the pair of bishops and this asymmetry of pawns still favors us. But without the rooks, and without the activity, it's not so easy. So black is maybe slightly better, but it's not a lot. But still, we can play this end game forever. We should never be worse with the two bishops. Okay, here I think f5 is quite natural. We need to gain some space and activate the king. And since I think we need to play f5 anyway, and the king has a faster route to the center, I would prefer this way. And there is no need to be afraid here. G6, it's very stable and some direct attempts just don't work out well. Like this, but yeah. Our pawns are well defended. However, the game went king f8, knight d3, king e7. Um, and here again, we see some tactical problems because white was able to push b4 here with the idea of taking and taking and the king on e7 is a bit more exposed than it would be on f7 because of this knight fork and yeah white has good drawing chances here or might be even better <laughs> if this pass pawn is getting dangerous of course black is not worse if he keeps the bishops so this b4 is from a strategic point of view also quite useful for white because white in general wants to create a passer uh, to trade as many pawns to come closer to the draw and also distract black a little bit from the king side however white never sees this opportunity and yeah black managed to improve his position bishop here um f5 this is all fine g5 Knight c2, white is getting a bit passive, a5, a3. This is the next critical position where I want you to think about it and come up with a move and a plan. Um, how would you continue here? And we will discuss some options. So basically white had been threatening before with his last move. And we have a choice, should we prevent b4 or should we allow it? There is just one move which is preventing b4, which is a4. In general, it's quite desirable for us to prevent this push because then he's not getting a passer. Well, he could get a passer still, but we take. And the a passer, I think it's, it's quite vulnerable. Also, the bishop would be quite misplaced and we get our pieces out very smoothly. I think this looks quite good, but if not this, then okay. Uh, we prevented b4 basically saying this pawn is as strong as those two pawns. The only issue black might see here is that this pawn is getting weak, but actually we have bishop d7 and this end game here would be also excellent for us. All the pawns here are on dark squares. The bishop is dominating the knight and black basically has a winning position here. So this was a good option, but um, you need to judge the trade of bishops correctly. So what else is a good option? Getting counterplay fast. And this is f4. So white is trying to create some trouble on the queen side, but we come with some counterplay. And for example here, uh, white is still quite passive. The knight is really dominated, not having any squares except a1. And we also 
can just centralize more and white is having no counterplay, we have space and the bishops. And potentially we might create a pass pawn in the future. For example, I just uh, want to show a sample line. We can try something like this, check h6 takes and h uh, if takes and h4. We can target this pawn and I think I had another line. If knight d4 trying to activate a knight, we have some chances to queen a pawn. So it's getting really dangerous for white after f4 because we use our majority on the king side. However, in the game, black was a bit too slow playing h6, which is not yet necessary and not really creating threats. And after that, b4 takes, takes. Okay, white is not yet scared of anything. And if we retreat our bishop, then he might trade some further pawns coming closer to the draw. And this f3 move would also not be that easy if we had already pushed f4, because we might consider pushing e3, which we cannot now. However, in the game, black made a big blunder, and this is quite instructive. Um, and I want to show you how not to blunder like this. Okay, black thought he could win a pawn here by king c5. But when you sacrifice a piece, you always need to watch out for some forcing counter attacks because your opponent usually has a lot of options because he can give back the piece in good circumstances. So he can attack in all crazy ways. So you always, when you need, uh, when you sacrifice a piece, you always need to check all the active possibilities. And here there is just one active possibility attacking our bishop. And this time it's not even a sacrifice and this is winning quite easily for white. So black would actually just be lost here. Luckily for black, white didn't find this and from now it's not that interesting for us. Um, it's still a draw. Um, for example, this was also still fine, but king d2 is of course a huge blunder. White should just take the pawn and trade the pawns when after something like this he's trying to eliminate the last pawn with a draw. In the game, white yeah, blundered back with king d2 and after that black was easily winning. White has weaknesses and black is having a passer which will be decisive. The bishop is going passive and now the pawn is just um, yeah, too strong. Um, we will just walk in here, the king will never have counterplay, all the squares are controlled, no counterplay against our pawn on the dark square and we will just pick up the weaknesses. So that's it for this game, I hope you enjoyed the video, if so please like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time, goodbye.